All right, what's up? In this video, I'm gonna go over my settings for shooting sports. I'm gonna go over my in-camera settings, my premiere timeline settings, and also my export settings. Okay, so to start with basic in-camera settings, I shoot on 1080, 120 FPS. I feel like most people who shoot sports do that as well, just for the slow motion aspect. Um, if your camera can shoot 4K 120, like the Sony A7S III, or the Canon R5, or something like that, um, 4K 120 is awesome. Uh, the only problem is that the file sizes are huge, so if you're trying to get content out quickly, uh, it's usually not the best. Um, a happy medium could be 4K 60. Uh, you still get the 4K resolution, but 60 FPS is still good for slow motion and the file sizes aren't quite as big as 4K 120. Okay, so moving on to shutter speed, I usually follow the 180 degree rule, meaning that if I'm shooting 120 frames per second, my shutter speed is going to be 1 over 250, or if I'm shooting 60 frames per second, it'll be 1 over 125. This is just to keep the motion blur as you would see it if you were actually looking at the subject. Um, a lot of people like to crank their shutter speed when shooting sports just so that the motion blur is pretty much non-existent and it makes it look kind of like a video game and it's a pretty cool effect so if you're into that definitely try cranking your shutter speed. I think people go up to 1 over 800-ish uh, but yeah definitely try that out um, but industry standard is basically uh, double your frame rate so I would definitely stick to that if you're going for the more realistic look. Okay so moving on to aperture, uh, I usually try to shoot on the lowest aperture possible. Uh, to try to get the shallowest depth of field. So if that's on like a 70 to 200, I'm usually around f2.8. Or if it's like a 50 millimeter prime lens, I'm usually on f1.4. Um, it really depends on like your shooting environment, if you're outdoors or indoors, uh, whether you're using like ND filters or not. But typically the rule is to keep the aperture as low as possible just to get um, less in focus and more out of focus. Uh, if you're shooting manual for sports, sometimes it's hard to shoot on like an f2.8. So I know a lot of people go, up to around like f4 just so that it's easier on the manual focusing. So when it comes to ISO, I try to keep my ISO as low as possible. Um, I know sometimes if you're shooting indoor stuff, locker room shots or basketball, the lighting can be terrible and you're going to have to pump that number up. But for the most part, if you can keep your ISO low, you're going to keep your image nice and clean and not introduce too much grain into it. Um, when it comes to color profile, I shoot on picture profile 8. Uh, that's S-Log2. At JMU we all shoot that so that all of our colors are the same and we can keep everything nice and organized. When it comes to shooting in a team environment, it's really important that everyone has the same uh, picture profile working so that everyone's colors are consistent. And uh, with S-Log2 it's really nice because you have a lot of adjustability in post. You can, um, you can move things around a lot easier than you can if you're not shooting in log or a flat color profile. So I really recommend that. Okay, so to finish on my in-camera settings, when I'm shooting autofocus, uh, I go for a wide range instead of like the centrally focused one. And then for my drive mode, I usually crank that number up for a fast drive mode so that if I'm shooting autofocus, it'll switch between players faster and it won't take as long to rack focus like that. And then for my audio, I usually keep it around level 9 or 10. Um, if I'm shooting with my Rode shotgun mic, and then if I'm shooting with a lab mic, say I'm doing like a mic'd up or something like that, I'll turn my uh, audio record level all the way down to like one or two uh, because it's super loud and you, you never want your audio to clip. Um, the worst thing it can do is be quiet and then you just turn it up all the way, but if it's clipped, you can't really save it. Um, so always make sure that if you're shooting on a lab mic, um, your record level is really, really far down, like one or two. Okay, so jumping into Premiere, uh, the only setting that I really change in my sequence settings is the frames per second. Uh, I always want to edit on a 23.976 timeline. Um, I think that it creates the perfect blend of choppy and smooth, um, and that's pretty much industry standard all the way around. So moving into export settings, um, for format or codec, I always use H.264. Um, I know another popular uh, codec is ProRes, but that's better for things like motion graphics because it has little to no compression. So your file sizes are going to be huge. So if you're shooting anything that's over like 30 seconds or a minute, like it's just going to be an unmanageably big file size. So I would just always stick with H.264. Lastly, we have preset or bitrate. Um, I always used to shoot in match source high bitrate, but recently I found out that adaptive high bitrate is a lot better. Uh, when you're shooting in 4K resolution or 120 frames per second as opposed to like 24 frames per second. Um, Premiere will actually give you a custom bit rate that's usually two to three times bigger um, than if you're just doing match source high bit rate. Um, so for a typical one to two minute project, it's only gonna be like 120 megabytes. So if you're doubling or tripling that number, it's only gonna be about 300 megabytes, which is still a pretty manageable file size and uh, it just gives you more information overall. Alright, so those are all the settings that I use. I uh, appreciate if you would like, subscribe, comment, do whatever. Uh, give me some video suggestions in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys want to see. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.